Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, and today I'm on the hunt for one particular mushroom that thrives during the colder months of the year. And this mushroom is none other than enoki, also known as enokitaki, also known as the winter mushroom, also known as velvet shank, also known as velvet foot, also known as flamulina volutipes. Yes, all those names describe this one mushroom, but to simplify things, in this video I'm just going to use one common name, which is enoki and the Latin binomial Flamulina volutipes. This is a popular edible mushroom worldwide. It's cultivated and sold commercially on a rather large scale. One thing you should know about enoki though, the wild specimens at least, aren't that easy to positively identify. So I don't really consider them to be a beginner's mushroom because they kind of look like LBMs, or little brown mushrooms. If you know anything about LBMs, you know that they can be quite tricky to positively identify, and some of them can be quite toxic. Now remember, enoki is an edible mushroom. You can eat it, so make sure you cook it. But there's one LBM that tends to grow this time of year in the same habitat that could be confused for enoki. And that other LBM is the deadly gallerina. And just by hearing that name, you could probably imagine that that is a deadly poisonous mushroom. We don't want to confuse one for the other. So in this video, what I'm going to do is look for enoki mushrooms, help you positively identify them. Then we're going to look for the deadly gallerina and compare and contrast the two species so that you can positively identify each species on its own and not confuse one for the other. Sound good? Let's go see if we can first find some enoki mushrooms. Right here is an excellent fruiting of enoki, Flamulina volutipes. There are several clusters fruiting from this wood. You can see it's a sticky LBM, little brown mushroom. Now that genus name, Flamulina, refers to the flame-like appearance of members within this genus. Worldwide, there are about 15 species within the Flamulina genus. You'll find members in the Northern Hemisphere, also in the Southern Hemisphere. Now up until very recently, that cultivated variety of enoki that you find in grocery stores was also called Flamulina volutipes. But it looks much different than this one right here. The growing conditions are much different. However, the newest research just published in the journal Mycological Progress in 2018 suggests that that cultivated variety of enoki is actually a completely different species. It's Flamulina filiformis. The cap tissue is different, the spores are a little smaller, and the growing season is a little different. So the one that we find here in North America, in eastern North America this time of year, is Flamulina volutipes. This one's restricted to North America and also Europe. Now not only is Flamulina volutipes an edible mushroom, but it may also be a medicinal mushroom because research suggests that Flamulina species may have immunomodulatory properties, antioxidant properties, neuroprotective properties, also anti-tumor properties. So let's go over some key identifying features of this wild enoki mushroom. Enoki is a small white spore decomposer that, as I mentioned, thrives during the colder months of the year. So autumn is a good time to start looking for enoki, and you can continue your search through winter all the way up until spring. Now this mushroom typically grows in clusters, always on wood. So you're looking at stumps, standing dead trees, and logs of dead hardwood trees. Enoki's cap is orangish brown to reddish brown, and a very unique feature is that its texture is slimy and sticky when fresh. Older specimens may be dried out and may lose their sliminess, though in many cases, older specimens will still be sticky. So this feature is very characteristic for enoki, the fact that its cap is slimy and sticky. When we look at the underside of enoki, we discover lots of key identifying features, starting with the gills. So enoki is comprised of closely spaced gills that are attached to the stalk, and the color of the gills is white or whitish yellow. This is important to keep in mind, because mushrooms that resemble enoki, especially the one we'll be discussing in a few minutes, may have darker colored gills. But remember, enoki's gills are white to whitish yellow. The stalk of enoki is very unique as well. From the bottom up, the stalk is dark brown and velvety. And this is where the species name volutipes comes from, its velvety stalk. Nearer to the top of the stalk, however, it's typically smooth and yellowish. One last key identifying feature that I'll mention is its spore print. The spore print produced by enoki is white. Definitely take a spore print of this mushroom if you're not 100% certain of its identity. 
even if you're 99.999% certain, still take a spore print and it should be white. So now that we talked about some key features for Enoki Flamulina volutipes, let's talk about the deadly Gallarina, a poisonous fungus that grows in the same habitat during the same time of year. Now we don't have to go too far because there's literally a log right next to my knees, full of deadly Gallarina fungi. So all these LBMs right here are deadly Gallarina mushrooms and you can see how similar these are in appearance. Deadly Gallarina, Enoki mushrooms, not growing too far away from one another. Now it's not like this is growing right here. I actually had to walk about 10 yards over there and this log was light enough to bring over. So deadly Gallarina mushrooms, Gallarina marginata. Some field guides will see the older Latin binomial Gallarina autumnalis. Now that genus name Gallarina refers to the helmet like nature, the caps of some of these fungi. Worldwide, there are about 300 species in the Gallarina genus, mostly described from the northern hemisphere. Now, most of these mushrooms are saprophytic on wood or on plant debris, but a few species in the Gallarina genus are bryophilic, meaning they really like mosses and other bryophytes. So those are bryophilic species. Now, this one right here, Gallarina marginata, the deadly Gallarina, it's a deadly poisonous fungus you do not want to consume this mushroom. It contains the same class of compounds, amatoxins, found in deadly amanita mushrooms. Now amatoxins can bind to an enzyme within our bodies known as RNA polymerase II. This binding can interfere with transcription of messenger RNA, which can impair protein synthesis and lead to cell necrosis. And this can ultimately lead to liver failure, kidney failure, and death if supportive care is not sought out. So you do not want to consume this fungus. But it's a good thing to positively identify this fungus so we don't confuse it for the edible enoki mushrooms. So let's go over some key identifying features of the deadly gallarina fungus. So the deadly gallarina is a small LBM, little brown mushroom, that grows singly, scattered, or in small clusters on wood year round. Though it seems to be very common autumn through spring, especially here in Eastern North America. And it doesn't just grow in dead hardwood trees, it can also be found fruiting from conifer trees. Now the deadly gallarina is similar in size compared to enoki, though there are many differences to help us separate the two species. Let's start with the cap. The deadly gallarina, even though its cap color is similar to the cap color of enoki, is not as sticky or slimy as enoki. The deadly gallarina caps can be somewhat moist, so it's tricky to tell the two species apart just based on the surface of the cap. The biggest differences between the two species are located underneath the caps. So let's take a quick peek underneath and we'll begin with the gills. The fertile surface or underside of the deadly gallarina is comprised of gills that are yellowish brown to rusty brown. Remember, enoki has gills that are whitish to whitish yellow. That's a big difference right there, the color of the gills. Additional differences can be seen on the stalks of the two species. The deadly gallarina has a stalk that is not velvety near the bottom, though the stalk typically has a ring zone near the apex of the stalk. This ring zone comes from the partial veil that covered the gills of the deadly gallarina when the mushroom was immature. The partial veil broke and left the ring zone around the stalk. Enoki, on the other hand, does not contain a ring zone because it doesn't contain a partial veil. Also, Enoki's stalk is velvety near the bottom. Another big difference between the two species, and one that will definitely set the two apart, is the color of their spores. Deadly Gallarina deposits rusty brown spores. This is why its gills are rusty brown in maturity, and why its ring zone is typically rusty brown. Enoki, on the other hand, deposits a white spore print. Take a spore print to confirm your identification. If it's white and all the other characteristics align, you have Enoki. If your spore print is rusty brown, and all the characteristics align for the deadly gallarina mushroom, then you have the deadly gallarina mushroom. So deadly gallarina, gallarina marginata, a poisonous fungus, deadly poisonous fungus, we have enoki, a mushroom you can eat, flamulina volutipedes. So to wrap up, let's just go over some of the biggest differences between these two species one last time, starting with the cap. So enoki's cap is typically slimier and stickier on the underside, Enoki has gills that are whitish to whitish yellow. Deadly Gallarina has rusty brown gills in maturity. The stalk of Enoki near the bottom is velvety. That's where its Latin name, Volutipes, comes from. And there's no partial veil, no ring zone around the stalk of Enoki. 
But when we look at Deadly Gallerina, it does not have a velvety stem. There's typically a ring zone right around the apex of the stock. The spore prints are completely different, literally as different as night and day. We've got a white spore print with enoki, rusty brown spore print right here. So if you are brand new to foraging enoki mushrooms, definitely watch this video multiple times, consult various field guides, take spore prints, take more spore prints, take even more spore prints, and you will feel confident in positively identifying enoki mushrooms. <laughs> now just a few final thoughts regarding enoki flamulina volutipes. Here's a couple specimens that I harvested from that log. One thing you want to keep in mind is that because these caps are so sticky, they can attract a lot of debris and a lot of soil. They'll stick right to those caps. So whenever you harvest these mushrooms with a knife or with scissors, if you pluck them off, don't put them on the forest floor because you're going to get soil and debris on these caps. Keep them clean. Put them in a wax bag, put them in a paper bag. A basket might be too big. You know, these mushrooms are small and quite delicate. So put them in some kind of bag, get them home safely and cleanly. And then whenever you're ready to cook these mushrooms, I like to discard these stems because they're a little too fibrous. Remember, they're tough, they're hard to break. That's a key feature for enoki but you probably don't want to cook those unless you're putting them in a soup or crock pot meal. And that's what I like to do. I like to throw them in soups, but I also like to stir fry enoki. Not that long though, because these are small and delicate. You don't need to blast them with heat for a long period of time. Just a little bit of cooking, but definitely cook these before you consume them. Go through all those features, make sure you can positively identify this fungus. Then if you do feel confident with your identification, then perhaps try cooking up these mushrooms and see what you think. Some people really love these mushrooms. Some people don't really care for them. I really like this mushroom. I don't see it too often. I don't consider it a rare fungus. I just don't see it as frequently as some other edible mushrooms. So it's always a joy whenever I do come across Enoki flamulina volutipes. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. Head on over to learnyourland.com. You can sign up for the email newsletter. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, at Learn Your Land. Thanks again. Happy winter foraging.